Hey, what's up guys? Matt Laidlaw here, coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson, LA area's oldest, largest, and finest Harley-Davidson dealership. So today, I'm gonna to be doing a test ride and review on the brand new 2018 Softail Slim. So this bike only comes in a 107 version, so I will be doing this test ride on the 107. This color is the Vivid Black. All right, guys, so let's jump into this thing here. So this is a 2018 Softail Slim. This is the Vivid Black. And this year was a huge year for the Softails. They completely revamped the frame now. I have a, a video that goes into detail about this new platform. I highly recommend watching it if you really want to know the details on this new frame. So between this bike and the 2017 Softail Slim, all the way back to 2012 when it was first introduced, these 2018s are completely different than previous model years. Uh, they're a lot better. Um, and I'll get more into that as we go along here. So the slim is all about the bobbed, chopped uh, look. So you can see in the rear there, no tail light. You just have the two turn signals, bobbed, chopped fender, side mounted license plate. Uh, the slim draws its inspiration from the post-World War II era. Here's a, your, uh, your seat here. It's a solo bobber seat there tuck and roll style stitching seat. Uh, you've got just a toe shifter in the front. You don't have a heel shifter on this bike. This is a real minimalist type of a bike. Um, the, the finishes on the engine, you've got your, your kind of your raw aluminum and wrinkled black finishes. Floorboards here, are kind of a, uh, a half moon, real retro style floorboard. They really you know, kind of pay homage to the old style of, of soft tails back in the day. And Really, really hard tails back in the day, I should say. And um, yeah, the the emblems on the tank, once again, are nostalgic looking emblems that uh, kind of resemble the old school emblems. On all the new soft tails, you got a USB port on the right in front of the the gas tank there, so you can charge your cell phone or something like that. You can put the bike into accessory mode and charge the your phone or while you're riding. So here's a shot of the front wheel and brake. You got a four piston caliper. These have a lot of bite to them. The stopping power is pretty dang good. Um, you know, some people were disappointed that certain models in this soft tail lineup didn't have the dual disc brakes anymore. Well, these single disc brakes really, they do the job really well. They're a lot better than previous generation soft tail brakes. So yeah, plenty of stopping power in the front. You've got LED Daymaker headlamps in all of the uh, new soft tails as well. So this is the seven inch LED Daymaker and it's this new like halo style. I like them. They're pretty cool. That this one suits the whole styling of this bike. I personally like the old style uh, uh, LED Daymaker a little bit better. The ones that have like more the the bubble look on the the front of the lights. Um, but yeah, these these look pretty dang good, and they're really bright as well. They're they're a heck of a lot better than the old soft tail lights. So yeah, the. Uh, you got spoke wheels on this bike as well, black rims, a pan style air cleaner cover there. And once again, you can see kind of like the raw aluminum on the, the heads and the, the cam timer cover and the side transmission cover. One more thing to kind of lend to this real minimalist bobber style uh, post-World War II type of styling here. And... Uh, you know, they use a lot of black in like the center console, the front forks all blacked out. The the handlebars on this bike, you've got that uh, cross brace uh, between the two main tubes of the handlebar. That's that's unique to this bike. This is a decorative cap, guys. They usually have the fuel gauge on the left-hand side, but now that is just a decorative cap. Here you can see the, the digital and analog display Once again, these bars, they call it the Hollywood bar. Um, back in the day, they used to put accessories like lights and, and accessories and stuff that hung on that cross brace between the two main tubes on the handlebars. And when you did that, you were to have gone Hollywood once you did that. 
right now I'm just cycling through the different display options on the digital display here. You got like remainder of miles, your odometer, trip A, trip B, and your gear and the RPM you're at. So this is all, it's all keyless ignition now guys. So you got two key fobs and you got these two aluminum keys that are only used to lock the fork. So as long as you've got these fobs in your possession on your body, then you just hit the run switch and the ignition fires up. And uh, I'm just demonstrating here how to lock the forks. So really the key, all it's used for is to lock and unlock the fork there. I like the style of the exhaust on this bike too. It's kind of a an evenly cut exhaust instead of like a staggered exhaust. I think it's I think it's a good looking exhaust. So you can see that the two pipes are even with one another there. So yeah, front fender you can see it's it's real chopped, real small, no lights or anything, no frill on it. The the slim is the the third least expensive soft tail in this new soft tail lineup. So you've got the least expensive is the street bob, and then the low rider, and then the slim. So you these bikes start off at um, a little over fifteen thousand bucks. So yeah, mid model year in twenty twelve, the soft tail came out uh, along with the the seventy two. <laughs> So let's jump into the specs here, um, and I don't think I mentioned the, the soft tails this year, they have the new Milwaukee 8, the Milwaukee 8 engine, named for its eight valves, four valves per cylinder, came out last year exclusively on the touring bikes. So this year with uh, the introduction of the new soft tail frame, Harley Davidson applied this Milwaukee 8 engine to all the soft tails this year. So this is HarleyDavidson.com, um, you know, they, they have some highlights here and some of the key points about this bike. So it is 35, 35 pounds lighter this year, which you, know, you may not think that that's a lot, but you really can feel the difference. Uh, these things are just a lighter, a lot better power to weight ratio now, especially you know with the added power of the Milwaukee 8. Here's all the available colors this year. This is the vivid black. This is the color that I'm using uh, on the bike on this video. Next color is denim black. So it's basically your flat black. Harley Davidson calls the flat finish denim. So denim black, that color looks pretty good. This is a, a new color this year. It's called industrial gray denim. So yeah, that's a good color there. And this is called wicked red. Wicked red is also a new shade of red this year. You can get that color on the road glide special. Looks really good too. This is Bonneville salt denim. And so this is basically like a white denim that I'm a big fan of. Uh, probably going to be buying this color in a street glide. So yeah, Harley Davidson uses a lot of denim colors on this bike. One more thing to kind of lend to the old bobber rat rod type styling here. So here's some basic specs. You've got the Milwaukee 8. It's a 107 cubic inch engine in here. Um, here's some pricing here. So for Vivid Black, you're looking at $15,899. Anything other than Vivid Black, uh, you're looking at $16,299. ABS is an option, so you can get it with or without the ABS. The security system is standard on all the bikes, and that basically is required for that keyless ignition there. So you just flip the run switch, and the ignition fires up as opposed to having that little fob on the center console that you needed to spin in prior years. So here's some basic stats. Again, this is HarleyDavidson.com if you guys want to jump on here and take a look. 
Wheel size is a 16 inch in the front and a 16 inch in the rear. Rear wheel is a 150 millimeter rear tire. That's probably where it gets its name, the Slim. You got a five gallon gas tank. Yeah, the, the 150 millimeter rear tire is kind of a slim, a slimmer looking profile on the rear. And you get, you're gonna get about 47 miles to the gallon on this bike. And uh, the electric just kind of goes into the gauges a little bit. So you've got a, an analog speedometer and then your tack and your gear is all digital. So at 3000 RPM, this thing's gonna produce about 110 foot pounds of torque. And that's at the crank. So you know, you're, you're gonna be right around 103 or foot pounds of torque or so at the rear wheel. And these bikes produce about 80 horsepower at the rear wheel on a 107 Milwaukee 8. So um, I, I'm gonna go over some accessories with you guys. And these accessories aren't uh, aesthetics. They're all uh, functional and uh, ergonomics and uh, utility type of accessories. So the FLSL, that's the slim. So here's some options for suspension. If you want to lower the bike a little bit, you can do the profile low front suspension. The bike already comes with the low rear suspension in the bike. All the soft tails, with the exception of the Heritage and the Fat Bob, have the lower three and a half inch rear shock travel. The Fat Bob and the Heritage have a four and a half inch shock. Here are some seats that are available for this bike, and I'll be going over to more detail on the seats here in just a minute. But if you're a shorter guy and you want to fit the bike to your height a little bit better, my recommendation is get the low profile front suspension and the reach seat and maybe the reach handlebars. Uh, I, I get a lot of questions about shorter riders wanting to know what they can do to help get their feet plant it on the ground a little bit better so that would be my recommendation to go with those accessories here's some windshields that are available the king size hd detachable windshield you can get it in an 18 or 21 inch so if you're going on longer road trips i recommend these this is a little bit different style um, the nostalgic hd detachable windshield again just the the trim and the cross braces on the windshield are a little bit different here is a reach solo seat so this kicks you up uh, an inch and a quarter so if you're a little bit shorter rider you know maybe you're like you know five seven or five six and lower you're probably gonna want to get a seat like that it bumps you up closer to the, the handlebars a little bit more and also put your feet at a, at a or your legs at a straighter down trajectory towards the ground so it helps you touch the ground a little bit better this is a tall boy seat if you're a taller rider like myself i'm six foot six i would definitely want a seat like this um, it, it takes you back um, an inch and three quarters rearward, and then it makes you it makes it one and three quarters higher seat. One and three quarters rearward. I think I'm saying that right. So it kicks you back uh, one and three quarters inches and makes the seat higher by one and three quarters. So if you're a tall guy, and what I what I mean by tall is if you're like six feet or taller or taller than six feet, you might want to consider that. The only thing is then it's a two-up seat, and so you got that big puffy passenger seat back there as well, which you know I think kind of kills the look a little bit. Um, it'd be nice if they had a, a tall boy seat that was just a solo seat. Um, sundowner seat. This is uh, for more for comfort, guys. If you want a more comfortable ride, you can see here they say generous padding. Um, this is the seat to go with. So if you want to make this, if you're going to go on like a longer ride, you might want to go to a sundowner seat with the windshield. The solo seats, um, yeah, it's all right, but if you're on like a long ride, there's not a whole lot of like the lower back support on it. This is the Harley hammock seat. This is Harley Davidson's top of the line, best of the best touring seat. So yeah, if you're if you want the max comfort available on a Harley Davidson bike, you should go to a hammock seat. A little bit different technology in there. These are pricey, 530 bucks for one of these things but you and your passenger will be happy. So here's the hammock seat with the rider backrest. You can get the rider and passenger backrests on this bike here. Here's a pillion that's for the passenger that matches the stock solo seat. So if you want just this little small seat back there to do like a quick little trip with the passenger, you got that for 175 bucks. Your passenger won't be happy on that seat for more than about you know 20, 30 minutes. So here's some uh, passenger backrests that are available, sissy bars, as they're commonly referred to. So you can get them in standard height or a short height. That's the standard height there. I always recommend the standard height. If you're gonna put it on there, you might as well keep your passenger happy. 
Here's some bags that are available. This is a slim bag here. Here's another slim bag that it's it's available for a lot of the different models, but slim is one of the various models that this bag will fit. You can put a tour pack on the slim. Here's one I would recommend. I think it kind of goes with the styling of, of the slim the best. This is kind of your plain Jane smooth line vinyl. And you can also do this classic leather as well. It has some brass collection stuff on there. So let me take you guys through some of the details as I test rode this bike. So the Slim is a really fun bike to ride. The front and rear wheel are real symmetrical, so you've got real predictable handling. The tracking through a turn is real predictable and real easy as well. The bike I rode right before this one was the Breakout, and the Breakout has that big fat 240 millimeter rear tire. And so the tracking, when you put it into a turn, you have to fight the front end a little bit, and it handles it really good for what it is, but. The, the handling on this slim is just a lot more effortless. The frame, these new frames, the 2018 model year guys are awesome. I can't say enough good things about them. This thing just hauls ass. Um, if you guys haven't seen my previous uh, models that I've, I've test ridden with this frame on it, let me just tell you, this is the best overall performing chassis that Harley Davidson has ever come out with. And when I say performing, that's everything from the power to weight ratio, just how quickly it accelerates, how quickly it breaks, um, how well you can just throw it around in the turns and stuff. And you know, it's not like a dirt bike or anything like that, but for like a heavy cruiser class motorcycle, I, I don't think I've ever been on a platform that has overall performance better than these new soft tail frames. Um, you know, and I've ridden everything from Indian to Victory to your uh, Yamaha V Stars, uh, you know all that stuff. So, yeah, Har Harley Davidson definitely hit a home run with this new chassis. So, the the Slim, I enjoyed riding the Slim a lot more than the old Slims. You can ride these new Slims a lot more aggressively, and to define aggressively, you can just you go faster. You can put the bike into a turn faster, and that's really the big thing is. You have a lot more confidence putting this bike into a turn. You've got a better lean angle. You're not dragging the boards uh, as nearly as easily. This thing has a lot better lean angle. Uh, the braking is really good, and it's just everything is just the, the input that you give the bike. It just reacts a lot faster. A couple things I I didn't really care for as much uh, on this bike. The seat wasn't the greatest. It looks good, and I understand you know the the style and everything that Harley Davidson was going for. But I really prefer a seat on, on a motorcycle that has a little bit of more of that lower back cupping to it. I felt like on the freeway I had to kind of reposition myself a couple different times because I felt like I wasn't really getting that, that support in the saddle that I needed, uh, especially when I was you know cranking on it pretty hard. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the seat. It looks good and everything, but it's it's not the best seat from a functionality standpoint the other thing is is I, I feel like these frames are slightly smaller than the old ones and I don't have like any measurements or dimensions to back that up but I just feel a little more cramped on these new soft tails than I did on the old soft tails I feel like the old soft tails like the, the rider triangle was, was stretched and more uh, set up for someone who was you know, slightly taller um, not that the old soft tails fit me well, um, they didn't, but these bikes I feel like they're even more cramped. So 
you know, and that's just specific to me. Most guys that, you know, are six feet or shorter, these bikes will fit them great. But just speaking for myself, I feel like, you know, I, I wish that the these frames were stretched out a little bit more. Um, and again, I don't have, I don't know what the wheelbase is on these bikes or anything, but I just feel like uh, they're just like a, a little bit smaller bike. And you know, obviously with my size, I like a bigger bike. The Milwaukee 8 engine powers these things really good. Really good smooth power delivery all the way throughout the entire RPM spectrum. Real good low end torque as to be expected from a Harley Davidson. These bikes are a lot of fun to ride, a lot more fun than the previous generation soft tails. Just because of the handling with the new frame is so much better. Uh, the power to weight ratio is a lot better. The acceleration is, is really good. You've got a lot of that blow blow you back in your seat type of torque on these bikes, which is what's fun about a Harley Davidson is, is feeling that the torque in the seat of your pants. Um, many of you know I'm a touring bike guy. I've owned touring bikes in the past just because they fit me better. Um, if I wasn't as tall as I am, I probably be, would be buying one of these bikes this year. Um, but because I do a lot of freeway riding and because I'm, I'm really tall, um, I'm going to be buying a street glide here pretty soon. But uh, what I'm getting at is after riding these bikes for a while, they, they kind of make the touring bikes feel slow. Um, and the touring bikes are, are definitely not underpowered for you know, a heavy cruiser class bike or a heavy you know, touring bike. Uh, class, but you know these these things, uh, the the new soft tails, they'll you know they'll they'll leave the touring bikes in the dust. The improved lean angle is really nice on these bikes as well. On the old soft tails, you'd accidentally scrape the boards all the time. Uh, at least you know I can say that I accidentally scrape the boards all the time. On these bikes, you really have to be riding it aggressively through the turns. So this new slim, uh, you know you're you're a lot less likely to scrape the boards on accident. If you really want to and you're really you know going through a turn real sharp yeah you can scrape the boards but it's a lot less likely to, to be doing it on accident now so that's that's one more thing that kind of makes these these bikes uh have, they have the ability to be ridden a lot more aggressively as well i really like the cosmetics in the slim you know harley davidson is really good about incorporating new technology into these bikes while still maintaining the real classic look of the bike to the untrained eye you know, if someone doesn't know anything about Harleys, you know, they can look at that and they probably couldn't tell what what model year it is. And so Harley Davidson's done real good at, at maintaining the the look of the slim and, and incorporating the new frame, the new engine, and all that stuff in it. So I pulled out my mic there for a second so you can kind of hear the engine rolling at an idle. Uh, Harley Davidson did uh, incorporate an additional counterbalancer in the Milwaukee 8 engines that were installed on those soft tails so uh, in the touring bikes when the Milwaukee 8 first came out in 2017 they had a counterbalancer in the front now they, they still have that counterbalancer and they added one between the flywheels and the transmission in, in this uh, version of the Mil Milwaukee 8 that's been applied to the soft tail models one thing that I did think was kind of interesting is on these new soft tails uh, it's still a cable clutch Whereas, you know, last year and the last couple of years on the S models, they went to a hydraulic clutch. So I thought it was an interesting decision for Harley Davidson to stick to a cable clutch on these new soft tails, especially since the, the Milwaukee 8 that is on the touring bikes all have hydraulic clutches now. So something interesting, maybe if someone knows any information on this, maybe leave it in the comment section. But, you know, the cable clutch was great, you know, if it, you know, it's a tried and true technology. But, you know, and maybe they'll come out with a hydraulic clutch for these bikes in the future. I don't know. But, you know, no, no complaints there. Um, I like hydraulic clutch. But um, it's because you, know, you never have to you know, worry about adjusting your clutch. You don't have to worry about the, the brake or the clutch lines stretching or anything like that. But the clutch seemed really solid in this bike. So, yeah, I was happy with that. Uh, you got decent range on this motorcycle as well. You got the five gallon tank, so you know you can easily go 150 miles uh, be between Phillips, and that's that's on the conservative side. I like the fact that they use the analog tack for this bike. Just one more thing that kind of lends to the the old styling there, and um, you've got digitally your fuel gauge, your RPM, your your gear as well. You can see I'm in fourth gear right there, and so 
yeah, you still have all those that, that extra information in a really compact, consolidated area. So that's pretty nice. I feel like this bike kind of falls somewhere between a low rider and a heritage. It's kind of a, a cross between the two. It's got the, the heritage you know, styling with the wheel size and the headlamp dimensions and kind of that real like 50s, 60s type of classic look to it. But it's like a stripped down version of the Heritage where it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't even have a two up seat. You got a solo seat on this thing. And um, you don't have like the windshield. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of like from that standpoint, it's kind of like a, a low rider where it's more of a stripped down bike. But um, it doesn't have the chrome either. It's you've got the blacked out cosmetics and everything. So, you know, as far as who I would recommend this bike to, the it, really the the selection in Harley Davidson world has kind of been simplified now that you don't have the Dyna lineup anymore. So it's it's a lot easier to kind of steer someone towards any given motorcycle. The guys I would still steer towards the soft tails. The guys that. You know, aren't beginner riders, although beginners can learn on a soft tail. I just, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. There's better learner bikes out there. But the guys that already know how to ride motorcycles and they don't want or need a big touring bike, um, they want something they can ride a little bit more aggressively. And, you know, they still want that real clean, minimalist cruiser style, style classic look. So those, te those people I would steer towards a soft tail. And then specifically to a slim, uh, a lot of it comes down to styling. And you know, as, as shallow as that sounds, you know, really the styling and the look that you're going for can determine a lot as to what bike you should choose for yourself. So, if you like this styling, um, the real classic post World War II uh, quintessential Harley Davidson styling, then you know this bike definitely delivers that. And if you're going to be like a solo type rider that isn't really geared towards two up long range riding then this is probably a great bike for you and you can add all that stuff but you're going to get a better a better bang for your buck if you buy the heritage that already has the bags already has the windshield has the taller suspension in the rear there's just several things that you're going to get for a little bit more money in a heritage that if you know you're going to do that type of riding then i would steer you towards the heritage um, so if, if you're kind of a mostly solo type rider and you, you don't want all the, the frills and, and maybe you don't like the style of the saddlebags on the, on the Heritage either, they've kind of got this signature leather look with like the, uh, this year they have kind of like a, uh, almost looks like a crocodile scale or something like that, it's like a rhinestone type thing. It's, they've gotten away from the studs, which is a good move in my opinion. But you know, then your decision kind of becomes between this and the low rider. And then it just kind of comes down to little things. Like this bike has spoke wheels. A lot of people usually have a strong opinion about whether they like spoke wheels or mag wheels. If you like mag wheels, then the obvious choice is the low rider. Um, they both have the five gallon gas tank. Uh, there's a lot of people this year complaining about the bikes that have the uh, three and a half gallon gas tank, which would eliminate the street bob because you got the three and a half gallon gas tank on the street bob. But um, yeah, so. It, you know the the low rider has got two analog gauges on it so if you want if you like the analog gauge i know there's a lot of people that don't like anything electronic on these bikes so um really got to ask yourself do you want the blacked out uh, bobber type look or do you like the more chrome look and the low rider has you know the more chromed out look so you know as far as you know fitment and you know who, what, what size of person this bike's going to fit you know, I would say anybody from about you know five five to five six all the way up to you know six foot six foot one something like that. This this bike's going to do just fine on. And you know again, it's it's kind of your around town, just haul ass. It's got you know it's got good handling. You can take this thing up in the canyons and it'll perform really really well for you. So yeah, this is just kind of a good all around bike, quite frankly. So that about sums it up, guys. I appreciate you watching this soft tail slim video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I usually try hard to get back to anybody and answer any questions that you may have. If you wanna see more of these videos in the future, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications. 
and if I was able to help you out at all in giving you some information that you needed on this bike please click the thumbs up and like the video and if you're looking for one of these bikes and you live in Southern California you know where to find me thanks a lot guys mm -hmm.